Good afternoon, folks. My name's Chris Nitzo. This is an Oz Cyclone Chasers update, the final one for 2013. And it's a fairly action-packed one with Tropical Cyclone Christine making landfall last night as a very high-end Category 3 Tropical Cyclone. It pushed just a little bit to the west of where the Bureau were saying it was going to hit, uh, but it followed the European model very, very well. And we saw it hit around about 50 to 70 kilometres east of Caratha and push in a uh, westerly or a southwesterly direction on its approach to landfall. Now, because it did push a little bit further west, Caratha experienced a little bit more in intensity in it terms of its winds, and Port Headland luckily missed out on the storm surge that would have accompanied it had it had it remained over the over where it was forecast to track. So, a couple of a couple of good news stories, a couple of bad news stories in there. Uh, overall, Wickham was an area just on the western edge of the eye wall. It it copped the eye itself, uh, but it only copped sort of the edge of it. So it didn't get really calm there. It just uh, the wind died down to about 50 kilometres an hour before ramping back up into the 130s, 140s. So far, the strongest wind gust from the tropical cyclone was 223 kilometres an hour, about 120 knots, I believe, was the was the uh, was the maximum reported wind gust out of the system. That would put it very very close to category four. So do not be surprised if post analysis the bureau decides that this was in fact a category four tropical cyclone. If it didn't make cat four, it was a very high end three. The threat of the cyclone is not over yet. It is diminishing, but it is not over yet. It's a long way inland now, and it's still a Category 2 tropical cyclone. It should decrease to a Category 1 tonight, and then be an X cyclone tomorrow, but it's still going to track a fair way between now and then. So just bear that in mind that the threat of the cyclone is not over just yet. So if we take a look, the system tracks in a southwesterly direction and then pushes in a southerly direction now as it's captured by an upper level trough. And we can see the system here pretty clearly uh, is now to the south of about Tom Price. Uh, once again, let's track the eye. You can see that the eye pushes in a southerly direction and then now in a south-southeast direction. The eye probably crossed just to the west of Tom Price only minutes ago. Beautiful little radar grab of when the system was crossing the coast. You can see just in this radar grab that we have Wickham just in there and we have Roeburn just in there, both on the western edge of the eye wall. Now both of these places were raked with extreme winds as the system tracked over them. We did mention that the western edge eye wall would have the strongest rain and the heaviest rain and that's exactly what we saw on landfall. You can see there that western edge had the heaviest rain echoes uh, compared to say the eastern, the eastern eye wall. So as the system was going through or, or around Port Headland Actually, the, the the heaviest rain echoes were around the headland area, but as the system progressed in a more southwesterly direction, we actually saw that the western edge eye wall became the most intense, and that's why we had winds of up to 220 kilometres an hour reported, um, and and even mainland winds of 170 odd kilometres an hour were reported. So look, folks, this was a high end category three, but do not be surprised if post analysis it gets upgraded to Cat four. Just before landfall, it really exhibited the what we would expect a, a almost perfect looking tropical cyclone to exhibit. A very nice eye followed by some really nice spiral banding in and around the uh, in and around that eye. So we can see here this is uh, around about an hour and a half before landfall last night. It was a really intensifying tropical cyclone even that close to the coast. So. Uh, as I say, folks, it was a, certainly a serious system. Uh, Tropical Cyclone Rusty, who was a Cat 4, probably didn't pack as big a punch as this particular system, which was only a Cat 3. So it just gives you an idea that this was a very well-formed tropical cyclone, a very large tropical cyclone as well. Gales being experienced well east of Port Hedland around the Pardu area and well west of Caratha as well. So we can see that the area of gales for this system was... A, particularly large. This little snippet will show you what it was like in Wickham this morning and will show you that there has been a number of roofs that have uh, have been or a number of houses that have been de-roofed so if we look here we can see 
that that particular house has lost its roof um, and you can see bits of it there there uh, that have come off we see that most of the trees withstood a lot of damage uh, a lot of winds but once again structurally some houses did not fare very well in Wickham unfortunately from the Bureau of Meteorology, the Roeburn Airport observations show us that the lowest central pressure, sorry, the, the winds died down just around about, and if we just move this down a little bit to around about uh, just before, just after midnight, we had a bit of a lull there in Roeburn. The centre actually crossed or started crossing the coast well before that, but it was sort of because it was moving southwest and the coastline was orientated in the way it was, the actual landfall probably happened around 10, 10.30 p.m., the initial landfall, but it, it sort of remained right along the coastline all through to midnight. And what we see here is that uh, around about midnight we had that lull in the wind speeds and uh, they really ramped up just before that uh, on, on the approach of the eye. So we got wind gusts of around 170 and then just after that we got wind gusts back into the 130s uh, just after that lull of the western edge of the eye. Now it wasn't very calm there even in the eye. Uh, we still had 15 to 20 knot winds uh, but it was a lot calmer than, it, than uh, the previous and post uh, winds were. Now if we move on and have a look further to the further to the right of screen I'll show you the pressures. So even here we had a minimum pressure right around the same time as we had the lull so you can see right there and right there we had the lull and the minimum pressure so it just goes to show that the eye did actually cross Rayburn but as I say, it wasn't the centre of the eye, it was the western edge of the eye. I'd imagine that the centre of the eye would have been a lot uh, calmer. So as I mentioned, the, the eye of Tropical Cyclone Christine, this is a, a little bit old from the Bureau, but the eye of Tropical Cyclone Christine is now just to the south of Tom Price, right around Parabadu, and is moving in a southeast direction. Look, folks, it's expected to be a tropical cyclone even into tonight as it heads towards Three Rivers, and even, uh, even places even further southeast in there will experience gales when the system... Uh, basically shuts down into a low or, or weakens into a low. You're still going to see gales uh, on its northeastern quadrant in this area here, even though the low is positioned right on the edge there. So we're still going to see gales around the system to the northeast, even when it's a low. So it is a significant tropical cycle, and the fact is it has not weakened that much, uh, at least in the first few hours post-landfall. It is starting to show signs of weakening now, but that's to be expected. It's a, it's a few hundred kilometres inland now, so it's quite an amazing system. So even places like Parabadu inland have just experienced wind gusts of up to about 100 kilometres an hour. So we've had 98 kilometre an hour wind gusts and we've had sustained winds in the gale force plus area 60 to 70 kilometres an hour and uh, they have been very close to the system. They reported a minimum pressure of about 988. Okay, so if we leave Christine there for a while and we continue to look at the rest of tropical Australia, we see there is going to be uh, today some isolated showers and storms over the, top, uh, over the Northern Territory, the central and northern parts of the Northern Territory. Some very isolated showers and storms over the uh, Cape York. Uh, northern Cape York or Queensland. Tomorrow we see that rainfall continuing southeast into the gold fields of uh, WA. We continue to see some shower and storm activity pushing uh, into the Pilbara, East Pilbara, on a northerly, moist northerly airstream. We see very isolated shower and storm activity over the Kimberley and western top end. Possibly some very isolated shower and storm activity over the northern inland parts of Queensland as well tomorrow. As we head to Thursday, we continue to see isolated activity there over northern inland Queensland, possibly even the Gulf Country on Thursday. Uh, the activity over the Kimberley starts to redevelop uh, with a little bit more gusto so we see more scattered showers and storms in that area and as we head to Friday we start to see an increase in activity over the northern inland parts of Queensland and also the northern parts of the Kimberley are continuing to become active again the top end and the western parts of the Territory seeing isolated shower and storm activity. 
But then on Saturday, we start to see conditions really starting to uh, once again become more tropical. Uh, we see uh, once that low and, and associated trough push offshore, a little bit of dry air comes through. Once that dry air shoves off, we get more moist air coming back into the northern parts of Australia. So we see some really good totals possible over the Northern Territory, North Kimberley, and even Northern Inland Queensland seems to be a bit of a hot spot for activity in terms of shower and storm. Now, over the next four days, to put that into perspective, once again, the bulk of the rain will fall through the trough system that is capturing Tropical Cyclone Christine. There will be a little bit of stuff over the Kimberley, as we've mentioned, and some stuff over northern inland Queensland. Now, the next four days after that, gets a little bit more interesting for the tropics in general. We see an increase in shower and storm and possibly even some rain activity over the uh, over the northern parts of Queensland and the far northern parts of Queensland and also uh, pushing into the central interior southeastern parts of Queensland we're seeing some uh, fairly decent signatures from some of the models of some good rainfall there with a trough system. The Gulf Country primarily missing out but overall showers and storms will be in that area so don't be surprised if you do happen to be under one where you cop a fair bit of rain from it. The top end of the Territory uh, will start to see an increase in activity and when we start talking in the, in the next couple of minutes we're going to be talking about a low pressure system that could form in the western half of the Gulf and push across the top end of the uh, Territory and that will further enhance that rainfall in that area. So over the next week once again the primary spot is this area uh, to the uh, that is associated with the trough system so that's our primary area and then in the four to eight day period remembering we're looking at the northern half of Queensland and the northern half of the Northern Territory which could fire with some pretty decent rainfall totals as well. So as we head towards the 9th and 10th of January, which is our next uh, our next real time where we're starting to see the potential for activity, we see two areas of potential interest and the first one begins to form in this area and the second one is in a broad region here in the Western Gulf, uh, Northern Territory and, uh, and or the uh, Gulf uh, sorry, the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf out here. So really the the, the areas that are likely to or, or starting to show signs of firing in the longer term. Now there's a fairly low confidence in that uh, in that forecast and we really can't tell you what's going to happen after that. But in that uh, towards the end of next week, not this week, next week, we are starting to see signs of the South Pacific and the uh, northern half of the Northern Territory, that region possibly firing into a tropical low in both areas. At this stage, we're, we're not expecting anything in the South Pacific to push west just yet. However, the, uh, the system that may or may not form in that Gulf or Northern Territory region it is expected to push in a more westerly direction at this early stage. Now, that may or may not change. So, uh, don't be surprised if we're looking at another tropical low or cyclone in the WA region area of responsibility in the week 3 or 4 period because that's what it's starting to look like in the longer term. The MJO, the Madden-Julian Oscillation Index, is pretty well dead. It is in phase 6, sort of. Uh, it really has a very, very low amplitude. There is some model suggestion that in a week's time it will restart itself around phase 8, but once again it looks like it's going to die before any chance of getting back into Australia. So at this stage, for at least the next couple of weeks, the MJO will have very limited impact on anything in Australia, in the Australian tropics. So w once again, when that happens, it's, it becomes a little tougher to predict the longer term uh, possibility of tropical cyclones and rainfall events in northern Australia. If we have a very clear MJO signal, it's quite easy to tell you that week three to week four, we're looking at tropical cyclone development. In this situation, it becomes a lot more variable and we see a lot of other factors in play that aren't very well modelled and they aren't very well predicted. So unfortunately we can't give you a high confidence outlook into weeks three and four. What we can tell you is that late next week we are seeing some clear indications on some model guidance that there is likely to be a couple of areas that could fire uh, into next weekend. First one being that Northern Territory area, the second one being the South Pacific. 
You can see here on the spaghetti model plots that if we start to look towards mid-January, we can see that there is an area of interest in the global forecasting system model all through this South Pacific area, uh, Southwest Pacific area through Vanuatu, Fiji, possibly the Solomons. Uh, but we also see just broad areas of low pressure being modelled uh, out here in the northern, uh, the northern and northwestern half of the continent. So look, at this stage, looking at the euro, which we are not allowed to show you we are looking at this area here firing um, in that after after that Gulf flow develops late next week we are looking at this area firing up once again as we head towards the latter half of January we are seeing a lot uh, a fairly clear signal of a new tropical low in this area uh, where it where it goes how strong it is we can't tell you but we are seeing some clear indications on model guidance that in the long term this area will fire again towards later towards the later half of January. We are also seeing signs that the northern Australian monsoon may fire up towards the end of January as well. So just general low pressure regions in through here which will fire up or may fire up I should say not will uh, the monsoon for northern Australia uh, towards the end of January and once again as I stressed before we are still seeing that signal uh, of that low pressure region out here. Now whether that will form into anything significant and push to the west we can't tell you it's too far away but once again uh, middle to latter half of January we're seeing some decent signals of some uh, some pretty rough weather around the place it's just a matter of will it affect Australia or won't it affect Australia so uh, we can't tell you any more than that because once again as I say clear guidance by week three and week four is very difficult given the current benign pattern of the MJO. All we can say is we're going to have a nice, a nice easy week next week. Not much, not much to go on. Uh, the rest of this week, I should say, will be, will be once Christine's out of the way, nothing else to talk about. Next week, most of the week will be quite benign. Uh, there will be some shower and storm activity over the northern half, as as we would expect, but nothing major until next weekend when we start to see the chance of that low forming in the Gulf, and then following on from that, that low likely to push at this stage westwards and we may see some coral sea or southwest pacific development in the far eastern parts of the coral sea or the southwest pacific in that week as well it's just a matter of which way everything moves and we can't tell you that yet all right folks thanks for watching today uh, take care if you're still in the path of christine uh, we hope that aid uh, aid arrives quickly for those people that require it. Um, I'm sure emergency services are working overtime in that northwestern Australian area. Please keep posting your photos, videos uh, on our Facebook. We'd love to see uh, if you did get some footage from the system. We'd love to see and share some of the better ones with, with our viewers as well. And I'm sure they would love to see them uh, as well just to see what it's like inside a tropical cyclone. Unfortunately, due to lack of sponsorship this year, we could be there but if you'd like to support us uh, please feel free to click on an in video ad maybe on a website ad that we might that that we've placed on there we get a little bit of little bit of cash for a click um, that you might be interested in and we also sell our apps online as well in the iTunes store and the Google Play store so if you feel like uh, supporting us and you'd like to support us these are they, they are some ways that you can do so um, that will help support our future chases. So for this stage, we would be chasing most of the Queensland systems and uh, N NT systems that are accessible. So, but unfortunately, due to lack of sponsorship, we can't chase WA systems as much as we would have loved to. Thanks for watching today, and we'll talk to you again in the new year tomorrow. Have a good night.